idea of the Holy Communion is not something that just came into my mind. It's something that was inspired by the Holy Ghost in my heart. And the reason why the Holy Ghost inspired it in my heart is because he told me that there is something new that is about to do in your life. So you need to understand that when there is a man to kneel down and pray, there is a God to hear prayers and there is a God to answer prayers. And every time when we pray, God responds by giving us ideas of what he wants us to do in his name so that somebody who is under the sound of my voice can be, can be blessed. So I want to welcome you to this broadcast but with so much excitement in my heart because there's something beautiful that is about to happen in your health. There's something amazing that is about to happen in your business. There's something amazing that's about to happen in your career. There's something amazing that's about to happen in your family in the name of Jesus. I'm here to tell you that whatever situation that you've been experiencing, the Lord did not put it in my heart today to just come and stand to you because he wants you to continue with these problems and these sufferings. It's because he wants to put a full stop to whatever you've been experiencing. So what I want from your homes and from wherever you're watching me is your faith. I want you to connect me with your faith. Remember, distance is not a barrier. If you can connect with your faith, you are going to catch the fire of the Holy Ghost in this place. Hallelujah. You are sitting next to somebody in your homes. Just look at them and say, praise the Lord. Tell them, praise the living Jesus. Say, hallelujah. Right, without wasting too much time. You know, we don't have so much time. I only have got about 20 to 30 minutes. I want to jump straight into the word of God. We are going to catch from where we, 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 we left last week. So I'm not going to go uh, far further from what we spoke about last week. Last week we opened up the book of Exodus 12. And we started our reading from the verse of 12. To, to verse 13 and I'm going to take you a bit yonder so that I bring you to table to what the Lord is about to do in your life. So I'm going to read Exodus 12 from verse 12. If you don't have your Bible, don't worry. What I want right now on your table is the, the drink and the bread that which after I pray is going to be the blood of Jesus and is going to be the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So make sure all those things are, are, are there. Make sure your volume is high enough on your gadget to make sure that your spirit is not disturbed by anything that is happening around you. I sense the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this place. The reason why I'm preaching to you even standing, I was explaining to my wife and I was just telling her, look, this needs me to stand because if I sit, you know, at times you cool down the spirit. Because when you sit down, you want to explain. I don't want to explain. I want to penetrate your spirits by power preaching. I want to penetrate your homes by healing. I want to penetrate your homes by deliverance. And I want to make sure by the end of this broadcast, somebody's testimony is knocking on their door in the name of Jesus. If you believe what I'm saying, shout amen. amen. Shout hallelujah. Right, listen to the word of God. Exodus 12 from verse 12. For I will pass, this is God speaking. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night. And I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Before I even go any further, when you look into the word of God and you see anywhere written Egypt, know it is talking of principalities that are against your testimonies. When you see anywhere the Bible writing Egypt, know it's talking about demonic principalities, systems that have been set in our families, systems that have been set in our, in our, in our societies, systems that have been set in our governments. To make sure that they control the way in which people get married. They control the way in which money comes in church. They control the way in which people get their breakthrough. But the Lord today is saying, For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and I will strike the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Take note, in the land of Egypt. So whatever principality that is against your breakthrough, which is Egypt, the Lord is promising that tonight he's going to pass through and he's going to strike the firstborn of Egypt. So I want to say to you today, whatever Egypt that is in your family, it can be demonic principalities of anti-marriage. It can be demonic principalities of death. It can be demonic principalities of poverty. The Lord is saying tonight, not tomorrow, tonight I'm going to pass by the land of Egypt and I'm going to strike the firstborn of Egypt. Listen to the word. Both men and beasts. So anything that belongs to Egypt, if it's a beast, if it's a man, if it is, if it is, if it is wealth, that belongs to the land of Egypt. The Lord is saying, I'm going to cause devastation in the land of Egypt. Not only am I going to strike the system, I'm going to strike the wealth that they've built through that system. So the, the, the Egypt has got, a, has got a way of operating. What it does is it penetrates into the life of the children of God. It pushes the children of God in corners. It causes delays in the lives of children of God. 
when the delays are happening in the lives of children of God, Egypt is prospering. But the Lord is saying today, enough is enough. Egypt shall not continue to prosper on your cause. Egypt shall not continue to prosper on your poverty. If Egypt was prospering because you were suffering, I'm here to announce that your suffering ends today in the name of Jesus. If Egypt was increasing and multiplying because of your sickness, I'm, I'm here to declare that you shall not be sick anymore. For the Lord is promising in his word, and he's saying, tonight I shall pass by the land of Egypt. In that night, and I'll strike the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beasts, and all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment, and I am the Lord. So the Lord is not only going to strike the systems of Egypt. Neither is he only going to strike the festivals of Egypt. Neither is he only going to strike the wealth that was accumulated by Egypt. God is also saying, I'm going to strike the gods of Egypt. So whoever who is responsible for the intelligence of your poverty, whoever responsible for orchestration of the intelligence of your sickness, the Lord is saying, I am going to pass judgment tonight. So I want to let you know that as you are going to go to sleep tonight, the Lord shall be executing judgment to whoever who believes to what I'm saying right now. If you are saying in your heart, yes, man of God, a preacher. If you are saying, yes, man of God, you are speaking to me. I want to declare to you and say, as I'm preaching, judgment is being executed against the devil. Judgment is being executed against every spirit. Judgment is being executed against Satan and his demons. Any demonic principality from your family, from your your father's side, from your mother's side shall not proceed today for the Lord says tonight I'm going to pass judgment. I don't know if you can hear what I'm saying. If you are hearing what I'm saying shout hallelujah somebody. Wherever you're watching me from, it doesn't matter you are alone in the room. Walls can hear you. It doesn't matter you are alone in the room. Curtains can hear you. Begin to jump and shout and say thank you Jesus. Something is happening in my life. Something is happening in my family. Something is happening in my finances. The Lord shall execute judgment. Anybody responsible for you not getting married. The Lord shall execute judgment. Every outer responsible for your delays. The Lord shall execute judgment. I'm not saying this out of my intelligence. I'm saying this as the word of God. It's not Munya saying these words. God is saying this out of his word. He's saying anything responsible for your sickness. Today I'm executing judgment by the power of the Holy Ghost. Today I execute judgment. I'm here to announce what the Lord is saying. I'm not here to speak my mind. I'm not here to speak my passion. I'm here to preach the word of the Lord. To say the Lord says tonight is the night. That judgment is going to be passed against anything against you. Egypt will fall tonight. If you are sick, Egypt will fall tonight. The goals of Egypt, the goals of your family shall fall. The goals that are responsible for any calamity that is happening in your life. The Bible is telling us they shall fall tonight. Let me not waste too much time on verse 12. Let's jump to verse 13. Let's hear the word of the Lord. Verse 18. Now the blood shall be the sign for you. I don't know if you're hearing what I'm saying. Now this begins to make sense. But somebody right now was saying, so what is that cup doing in front of him? What is this bread doing in front of him? Here is the catch. The Lord is saying judgment shall be executed. But for you not to be affected by the judgment that is about to be passed. The Lord is saying the blood shall be a sign for you on your houses where you are. The blood shall be the sign. So as we take Holy Communion, not only are we drinking the blood, we are drinking a sign. I don't know if somebody is hearing me from home there. When you take the Holy Communion, you are drinking a sign that the Lord is saying, before I execute judgment, or as I come to execute judgment, I need a sign. Yes, yes. What sign? Listen to this. Shall be the sign of your houses where you are. So I need to know where you are so that you're not affected by the judgment I pass. Least you also become part of those that are going to be judged. Least you also become part of those that are going to be killed. I want to make sure that I don't kill my own. I want to make sure my own, out of the killing I'm going to do, my own shall come out with a testimony. <laughs> I don't know if you're hearing what I'm saying. The Lord is saying there is death tonight. The Lord is saying there is an attack tonight. The Lord is saying there's a judgment tonight. But the judgment is also in, a, in, a, in, in the same environment where my own are found. 
But to make sure that the judgment that I'm going to pass in that environment, and my own are not going to be, uh, to be affected by that, by, that, by, by, by that judgment, my own should have a sign. Yes. What is the sign? The blood of the house is where you are. So as we take Holy Communion, we are drinking a sign that, Lord, let not your judgment touch our homes. Let not your judgment touch our businesses. Let not your judgment touch our careers. Let not your judgment touch our children. So I want you to understand this. Even if you were thinking you're going to take this Holy Communion for yourself, it's not enough for you to think like that. Because if you take it for yourself, what about your father who is not here? What about your sister who is not here? So this Holy Communion shall go and touch even your families. Because we don't want them to be part of the people to be affected by the judgment. So our faith is going yonder today. We are saying, Lord, use us as your vessels. Use us as instruments to bless our families. Use us as instruments to heal our families. Use us as instruments to, to, to elevate our families. As we drink the blood, even our families who are not here shall be protected, shall be blessed. So the blood shall be the sign of the houses where you are. When I see the blood, oh yeah, 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 yeah. When I see the blood, when you take Holy Communion and the Lord is coming to look for a sign, a sign of what? Of the blood of where you are. Why do you need the sign? Here is your answer. Because when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. <laughs> I don't know if your faith is elevated as my faith today. I don't know if your faith is excited as my faith today. I feel like the Lord is about to do something beautiful in my life. I feel my enemies are about to receive a judgment in their lives. This coronavirus is about to be judged. Yes. This poverty is about to be judged. This sickness is about to be judged. Yes. But I am not going to be affected by the judgment. Because the Lord says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Do you see what you are doing when you are taking the Holy Communion? Do you see what you are doing? It might have a certain test. Some of you are taking the Holy Communion orange juice. Some of you are taking raspberry. Some of you are taking cream soda. Doesn't matter. Some of you are taking water. You don't even have juice. Some of you are taking uh, 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 grape juice. Whatever that you are taking, it can have a certain test. But what the Lord is about to do is beyond the test of whatever you are about to take. Whatever that you are about to take. Coming is the time, or right now is the time as I'm preaching. Anointing is penetrating into your homes. Anointing is penetrating into those cups. And that liquid that you are about to drink has been transformed into the blood of Jesus. And the Lord is saying as you drink it, as you are drinking it, that is the sign that I'm looking for. The sign of what? Of the blood. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That which is going to kill another person will pass over you. That which is going to be used by the Lord as a judgment in other families is going to pass over you. That which is going to kill other people is going to pass over. That which is going to destroy other nations. Tonight going is going to judge other nations. But guess what? As other nations are going to be judged, your family is going to be receiving blessings because of your participation in this Holy Communion. I want you to understand what you are doing tonight. You are doing an extraordinary thing. Your brother's life shall be spared tonight. Your sister's life shall be spared tonight because of your participation in this Holy Communion. I want somebody to understand what they are doing. I don't know if your faith is communing with my faith. I don't know if your faith is grasping what I'm trying to put to you. We are doing something we have never done before. That virus that was meant to kill our fathers, our fathers shall have many more years because of what we are about to do in a few minutes. Mm. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Wherever you are, just begin to thank him. Thank, open your lips and say, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're about to do. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your grace. Thank you for your love. Let me finish this thing. Let me finish this thing. So when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Even when you are going to take this Holy Communion on your own. Because remember, you don't need to wait for me to announce Holy Communion to you on your own. I've taught you to take Holy Communion on your own. So even when you are taking the Holy Communion on your own, do you see that this teaching is timeless? Because it's teaching you that when you take Holy Communion, you are proclaiming blessings over your health. You are proclaiming blessings over you will never be poor from today. You will never be sick in your body. Whatever sickness that is in your body shall be neutralized by the power in the blood of Jesus. I don't know if you are hearing what I'm saying. 
So as you are taking this Holy Communion, know what you are drinking. You are drinking judgment upon your enemies. And you are drinking blessings upon your life. That witch, that wizard, has got guts to mess around with your life. Because what I'm releasing in the realm of the spirit shall cause judgment upon their children. Shall cause a judgment upon their families. Shall cause a judgment upon their finances. You shall not continue to be in poverty at the expense of their riches. You shall not continue to be in sickness at the expense of their good health. There are people that I'm preaching to right now who are sick so that your witches and wizards remain in good health. There are people that are broke right now who are in poverty so that the witches and wizards can continue prospering. I come with the judgment of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I say the Lord is saying when I see the blood tonight, not tomorrow, tonight, when I see the blood, I will preserve your life. I will preserve your marriage. I will preserve your business. I will open a door where there looks like there is no way. I will make a way where it looks like there is no way. Wherever you are watching me from, shout the blood of Jesus. Shout the blood of Jesus. And listen to this. And the black shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. If you are sitting next to somebody, tell them, I smell my blessing. I smell my testimony. Say, judgment is coming upon my enemies. Say, judgment is coming upon a demon of poverty. Judgment is coming upon a demon of sickness. Say, neighbor, I will not die. I will live to declare the goodness of Jesus Christ. I want you to rush with me to verse 28 of the same chapter. We are in Exodus chapter 12, verse 28. I'm concluding now. Then the children of Israel went away and did so. The children of Israel went away. Who are the children of Israel? You are. Who is the land of Egypt? The devil. So the children of Israel went away from the land that was controlled by the devil. From the I don't know if you are hearing me, mama. They went away from a system that was controlled by the devil. Now in the New Testament, when we are talking of Egypt and Pharaoh, we are not talking of geographical location. We are talking of a system that is being run in a certain country. You can be in a country that is being run by an Egyptian system. But when you get out of the Egyptian system as a child of Israel, you don't physically move. You can get out by a spiritual movement. But how you see that you have gotten out of the land of Egypt as a child of Israel, your dreams begin to change. Where you used to have nightmares, you start dreaming, enjoying a life with angels. Where you had no peace and you were scared of death, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ begins to fill your heart. Where you were not certain about your future, you begin to have big dreams about your life. You begin to believe God restores your faith and he begins to assure you, Sharon, you can do this. You can achieve this. You are going to be whatever that I said you are going to be. It was looking like time had passed. It was looking like you were getting old. I want to tell you that I'm going to restore your confidence and you shall achieve. Whatever that I say, you will achieve. So the children of Israel, listen, listen, this is very important. Then the children of Israel went away. From where? From the land of Egypt. Look at your neighbor say, I'm going away. <laughs> they went away. Tawanda, away. What is away? It means far away. It means there's a distance. A distance from poverty. It means there's a distance. A distance from sickness. It means there's a distance. A distance from death. It means there's a gap. A gap from what killed your fathers and what killed your mothers. As I am preaching right now, physically you are still sitting where you were sitting when I started preaching. You are still, you are still, you, it looks like physically you are still where you were when I started preaching. But remember the New Testament says don't walk by physicality. Walk by spirituality. So we don't judge our services by what happens physically. As I'm preaching to you, there's something that is happening in the realm of the spirit. Look at your neighbor say, I'm going away. <laughs> in the Old Testament, they needed to move physically for them to believe. That's why God had to keep doing miracles for them to believe. Because their faith was sense knowledge. Their faith was sense ruled. They needed their minds to be satisfied. They needed their smell to be satisfied. They needed their taste, their touch, their feelings, their hearing, their eyes to be satisfied. In the New Testament, 
Jesus changed the rules. He said, don't walk by sight. Don't walk by hearing. Don't walk by test. So you are sitting where you are. It looks like you are sitting where you are sitting. It feels like you are sitting where you are. But I'm here to tell you that in the realm of the spirit, you are in another world. <laughs> you are in another world. You are in another world. You have moved. And I want you to take note. Take note. This, this overwhelmed me when I looked at it. Then the children of Israel went away. Went away and did so. Just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. So they did. So they moved away just as the Lord had commanded the prophet. So they did it just as the Lord had commanded the prophet. So it looked like it's the prophet giving them instruction. But the instruction is from the Lord. So what I'm here to make you do is not of my own. I'm not here to, to try and, 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 and show you my eloquence. I'm not here to try and show you how gifted I am. I'm here to give you exactly what the Lord said you should do. So they moved exactly as the Lord has commanded Moses. Exactly as the Lord had commanded Munya. Tonight they are going to move. Amen. Tell your neighbor I'm moving away. The last scripture. Listen to this. And it came to pass. <laughs> It came to pass at midnight. And almost of you, you know the scripture, but you had never realized this. It came to pass at midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on the throne. Why is the Bible emphasizing that from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on the throne? If the Bible could have just said from Pharaoh. We know who Pharaoh is. Why is the Lord emphasizing from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on the throne? To tell you that every principality, no matter its level tonight. Pardon me for sure now. Those are the pharaohs who sit on the throne. They are demons that when you were growing up, you were told, Musa, that here in our family we don't get married. Here in our family people will die young. Ever since when you were a bikini, now you are old. You are still hearing the same stories about those demons. Those are pharaohs that are sitting on the throne. Those are the demons who tell themselves there's nothing that anybody can do. I'm here as a prophet of Jehovah Shufa. I'm here as a prophet of Jehovah Jireh. I'm saying Pharaoh is falling down today. Pharaoh is falling from his throne. Pharaoh is falling from his throne by the power of the Holy Ghost. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah somebody. So it happened when it was midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborns in the land of Egypt from Pharaoh on the throne to the captive in the dungeon. So even those demons from your family that were starting to operate, we don't have time for them. The Lord is passing judgment tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. And if your landlord has got contribution to you being in that position, taking advantage of you renting, this message is going to leave him in a tight spot. Verse 31. Then he called for Moses and Aaron by night. Not tomorrow. The devastation was so hard that he called them by night. Before I conclude, I wanted you to really catch this. He called Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise, go out from among my people. Oh, no, You know we are not your people, but you are keeping us. Your landlord knows you will never own that house, but he's keeping you there. I hear I'm declaring as a prophet, rise and go to your home. Rise and go to your marriage. If you are in a rent, rented relationship, rise and go to the original. You know, there are people that are in rented relationships. You are in a relationship with a guy who knows he's not very serious about you. You are a lodger in that relationship. You know, there are people who are in rented jobs. The boss knows his company is not going to be there for too long. He actually has got plans to move and go to another town. But they will never tell you and they keep you there. Using you to make money for themselves. Using you to build their empires. Whoever is rising up because of your hard work, the Lord is passing judgment tonight. I said the Lord is passing judgment tonight. I said the Lord is passing judgment tonight. I said the Lord is passing judgment tonight. You better hear me very well in your homes. 
you better hear me very well wherever you are listening to me from. The Lord is passing judgment and he's looking for serious people. He's looking for people who are saying we are tired of being in rented relationships. We are tired of being in rented houses. We want our own. We want properties in our names. We want cars in our shatalabahaya. We want cars in our names. We are tired of paying banks for our cars. We want cars and businesses in our names. I raise an unction in this atmosphere and I say rise up and go. Pharaoh let my people go. I say let my people go in the name of Jesus. Is what? Rise up let my people go. Both you and your children of Israel. Go serve the Lord. Go and serve the Lord as you have said. So he I'm done. So he knew Why is he emphasizing that take your people and go? Taking your people and go is announcement of freedom. Are we agreeing? So, why is he announcing their freedom at the end by saying, take your people and go and go and worship your God? So, it means he knows if somebody is not free, they can't worship God. That is the trick that the devil uses. The devil knows if somebody is owing money to their landlord. They can't worship freely. <laughs> the devil knows if somebody has been told by their boss, I don't have money to pay you this month. They will not worship God freely. The devil knows if somebody is trying to worship God and the bank is looking for them for that car, for that house, they are not going to worship God freely. Why is Pharaoh the landlord saying, now take your people, go, go and worship God. Go and serve. Somebody cannot serve God if they're in bondage. So the devil has made bondage one of his biggest demons. Because he knows as long as you are not free, you will not worship God freely. But I'm here with good news. The beautiful thing about our Lord Jesus Christ is our tears don't end in tears. Look at your neighbor say it shall not end in tears. God will not leave us to cry and there's no solution. The message that I'm preaching today, that I've preached to you today, has lifted you up. Yes. You are going to be recognized. Yes. You are going to be called for interviews. Yes. You are going to be promoted. God that I worship is going to make a way where there is no way. Your business is going to grow from here. It looked like you had hit a brick wall. It looked like you are trying to penetrate through a wall. But I'm telling you, you are going to go through that wall like what knife cut through butter. There's a phone call that is coming from the north. There's a phone call coming from the south. There's a phone call coming from the east. There's a phone call coming from the west. It's your season to prosper. It's your season to shine. I want you to know what you're doing as you're taking this holy communion. That it is meant to take you out of poverty to a good life. It's meant to take you out of a life of sickness to a life of health. Wherever you are, if you can hold your holy communion, come on, put it in your hand. I feel anointing. Mama, help us here. Just put your, 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 your bread, your your your, your your drink in your hands as I pray. The anointing is moving in your homes. The anointing is moving in your workplaces. The blood that you are holding, the drink that you are holding is turning into the blood of Jesus. The bread that you are holding, it doesn't matter it's bread that you brought from a supermarket. It doesn't matter it's bread that you begged alone. It knows, it doesn't matter. The anointing of God knows no limitation. It knows no barrier. Right now as you are holding your bread, as you are holding your cup, begin to utter in other tongues something is happening. You are being healed of that coronavirus. You are being healed of that sickness. You are being healed. You are being healed. You are being healed. You are being healed. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are being healed. You are being healed. You are being healed. You are being healed. In the name of Jesus. Come on, hold that bread. Hold that bread. Kadobra. I want your faith. I want. I know you might be praying with people that you are shy to pray with. But this is no time for that. God has given you an opportunity to make sure that your future can be redirected. To make sure that your promotion can be released. You can't play with something like that. You can't worry about what your husband thinks. You can't worry about what the people around you think. Release your testimony. By the blood of Jesus, come on, speak in tongues. <laughs> Mm, 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 mm. Singing tongues, singing tongues. Hi, ya, 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 
point that bread to the screen of your television. Those that are here with me, point that bread to this altar. There's anointing that is coming from this altar in the mighty name of Jesus. As you are pointing that bread to me, as you are stretching that hand with that bread to me, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Be free in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. Don't be shy responding to this anointing. Don't be shy about what your neighbors. This is about your job on Monday. This is about your promotion on Monday. I say receive that promotion. Receive that promotion. Receive that breakthrough. Breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. Those fibroids, they are being flushed out. That cancer is coming out of your body. That HIV, there's no effect. You are healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. I want to hear you from your homes. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Break the bread. The book of Isaiah says, by his stripes, by his stripes, it means by this flesh, you are healed. Your healing is in the flesh of Jesus. Your healing is in the flesh of Jesus. Your healing is in the body of Jesus Christ. The Bible says he took our burdens and he carried them. Your burdens are in the flesh. As you are breaking this bread and eating it, let the burdens that you are carrying, let the burdens that you are carrying, be removed from your shoulders. Let the sickness in your body be flushed out by the blood of Jesus. Stretch it to me. I want uttermost anointing. Be healed of that coronavirus. Be healed. Let the dizziness end. Let the dizziness end. Let the dizziness end. Let the headaches end. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's eat the bread together. Speak in tongue. Zika do 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 do. Jebala ba da ba da ba da ba de. Hmm 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 hmm. Jaba ba 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 ba. Sing in tongue. Healing in your bodies. Let the headache stop now. Let the chest pain stop now. Let the stomach pain stop now. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. My career is strong. I'm powerful. I'm powerful. I'm dominating in every aspect of my life. As I drink this blood, I drink the New Testament. I drink the new agreement. Agreement of peace. Agreement of joy. Agreement of love. Agreement of power. I am more than a conqueror. In Jesus' name, let's drink it together. Wherever you are, rise up. Begin to walk in the light of your testimony. I'm healed. Walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light. I'm delivered, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Rise up, rise up. Wherever you are, rise up. Walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light. Walk in the light of the testimony. Come on, I'm healed. You have to confess it. You have to confess it. It doesn't happen without your participation. I'm blessed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm the light of this world. I'm free. Begin to breathe. 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 Breathe in the name of Jesus. Rise up from that sick bed. Rise up from that sick bed. Rise up, my brother. Rise up, my sister. Rise up. Let your business rise up from the ashes. Let your business rise up. Let your finances rise up. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, my Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Power. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God for giving us the name of Jesus. 
We are more than victorious because of this name. We are more than over. I hear a breakthrough. I hear a breakthrough. I hear a breakthrough. I hear a breakthrough. I hear the sound of many waters. I hear the sound of many waters. If you are under the sound of my voice, I hear the sound of rain. I hear the sound of rain. Whatever your name is, John, Jennifer, Susan, Vimbai, Tawanda, whoever is watching me, Vimbai, whoever is watching, Bella, whoever, whoever, Tawanda, whoever is watching me, whoever, I might not name your names, whatever your name is, I say to you as Elijah said to Ahab, get on your chariot before the rain overtakes you. I declare the same, abundance of rain is coming. Abundance of rain is coming. Abundance of rain is coming. Abundance of rain. Father, I thank you. Holy Spirit, you are glorious. In Jesus' mighty name. Stretch your hands towards me. You are the glory of God. You are the light of God. You are piercing through darkness of poverty as the light of God. Can you comprehend that? You are piercing through the darkness of sickness as the light of God. Shout on the light. Shout on the light. Shout on the light. Yes, as the light I declare, you are piercing through the darkness of fear with the light of God. You are piercing through the darkness of worry. There's been so many worries, calamities, things happening, but I see your heart being strengthened as I'm praying right now. You are piercing through every darkness. The Lord is by your side. The Lord Jesus is by your side as I pray. Thank you, my Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. If you are hearing what I'm saying, shout, I'm free. Shout, I'm healed. Say, I'm rich. I am blessed. I am anointed. Shout, I'm the glory of God. You know that, right? That you are the glory of God? You know that? You know you are the glory of God? Shout, I'm the glory of God. No, no, no. We don't look for the glory. I hear people say, I'm going to pray to look for the glory of God. We don't look for the glory of God. We are the glory. We shine. We shine. Shout, I'm shining. My business is shining. My marriage is shining. I'm a confident man, woman. Come on, say, I'm a confident person. I'm a confident believer. My faith is getting stronger and stronger. Shout glory. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Say neighbor. Say neighbor. Take a good look at me. Say, come on, check me out, check me out, check me out. Say, take a good look. Say, take a good look. Say, make sure you remember. Because the next time you see me, it will be another me. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 Oh, my God. Power. We thank God for the grace, for the anointing. It's in your homes right now. We've come to the end of this program. You know me, I love to talk. I wish I could continue, but I have to stop here. I'm worried about your data. May the Lord bless you, increase you, and multiply you. I release anointing and blessings upon your homes and your families. Whatever you do, prosper. You are going to be assisted by the Holy Ghost to get that job. You are going to be assisted by the Holy Ghost to get that promotion. It's your season. I'm telling you, I'm not talking by, by guessing or hearsay. I'm telling you the mind of God. It's your season. In this period where every door is closed, where Sunday they will announce that we are closing, we are closing, but your doors are going to open up. Your doors are going to open up. Your doors are opening up. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let children of God shout amen. amen. Let the children of God shout amen. amen. May the Lord bless you. May he multiply you. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much. I love you. Let's close the service. With the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down. In green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name.
Share out, brethren. Share out, brethren. Because we need more equipment.